is Salam Zeti Adene, and the topic for today is complex number. We'll be looking at the basis and everything of complex number. Now, complex number originated from the square root of minus one, and what is the root of minus one? The root of minus one is i. So that means in our secondary school, they will tell us that the square root of minus one is not possible. Whereas the square root of minus one is possible, it will give us a complex number. And that complex number is what we found inside. And therefore, we have the square root of minus four. The square root of minus four will give us two i. Now, what is the standard equation of the complex number? The standard equation of the complex number is a plus bi. And your a is what we term as the real part. Why the b is what we term as the imaginary part. So that means a complex number is a mixture of the real part and the imaginary part. And what do we need to know under the complex number? We have the operations of the complex number. And the first operation we have is the addition and the subtraction of a complex number. So what are we saying about the addition and the subtraction of a complex number? Let's assume we are having something like this. Plus, let's say we have 3i plus 5. So how can we add this together? That means we have it as 2i plus 3i. That will give us 5i. And what is minus 3 plus 5? That will give us 2i. And that is that about the addition and the subtraction. But this one is simple. Nobody can ask us that. So let us now look at the multiplication. The multiplication of a complex number, we have something like this. 2 plus 5i into 4 minus 3i. So if we have 2 plus 5i into 4 minus 3i, how can we solve? That means we expand. And if we expand 2 times 4, we give us what? We give us 8. Now 2 times minus 3, we give us what? Minus 6i. This time this, we give us what? Plus 20i. This time this, we give us minus 15i squared. Now when we now get to this side, we need to go back to this. Now how can we get i squared? We can get i squared from this side by squaring our both sides. So if we square this side, what do we have? Minus 1 is equal to i squared. That means we have to know that our i squared is equal to what? Minus 1. So from this, we will have it as 8. This and this will give us plus 14i. Now, our i squared is minus 1. So what is minus 1 times minus 5? Sorry, minus 15. That will give us plus 15. And what is 8 plus 15? That will give us 23 plus 1. 14i and that is all about a complex number let's solve another question on that let's assume we have 2 minus 5i into 1 plus 4i so how can we solve that means we expand multiply it that will give us 2 plus 8i minus 5i minus 20i squared and for instance again we have it as 2 these are these will give us plus 3i minus 20i squared and what is the basis? Our i squared is, is equal to what? Minus 1. So what is minus 1 times 20? That will give us... Minus 20 times minus 1 will give us what? Plus 20. And 2 plus 20 will give us what? 22 plus 3i. And that is all about that. And also they can ask us to rationalize a complex number. And what are we saying about the rationalization of complex number? Now let's look at this. They say we should simplify 2 over 4 plus 5i. Wow. So how can we simplify this? This is taking us back to solve. If you have this under solve, what will you do? You rationalize. And let us rationalize and don't forget, how do we rationalize? We rationalize by multiplying through by what? By the conjugate of the denominator. And what is the meaning of conjugate? The changing of signs. That means if we have minus, it will change to plus. Since we are having plus, it will change to minus. And that will give us 4 minus 5i over 4 minus 5i. And that means we have to expand. What is 2 times 4? We have it as 8 minus 2 times 5, we give us what? 10i. Over 4 times 4, we give us 16. And you know, when we are talking about conjugate, the multiplication, we don't have to expand everything. We just multiply the first and the last. So this and this will give us what? Minus 25i squared. And the basis of complex number is i squared. What is i squared? i squared will give us minus 1. Minus 1 times this will give us what? Plus 25. Plus 25 plus this will give us what? That will give us 41. And that will give us 8 minus 10i over what? Over 41. Now let's assume we are having this. They can also ask us something to find the real part and the imaginary part. So since we are having this, you know, we can split our answer. And that will give us 8 over 41 minus 10i over 41. So for this, if they are asking us to get the real part, that means your real part is what is 8 over 41. And if they are asking you to get the imaginary part, your imaginary part is what is minus 10i over what? Over 41. And that is all about that.
Now let's look at this. We have a function like this: one plus two i all squared. What is one plus two i all squared? That will give us one plus two i into what? Into one plus two i, and then we expand. That will give us one plus two i plus two i plus four i squared. And what is your i squared? Minus one. Minus one times four will give us minus one. Minus sorry, minus four. Minus four plus one will give us minus three. And that will give us what? Minus three. And this and this will give us what? Plus four. And that is that about that. So we don't need to waste time on complex number. Now, the next thing we have to look at under complex number is what we term as what? Simplification. And what is the meaning of simplification? The basis of complex number, as I have told you, is what? Your i squared is equal to what? Minus 1. Let's assume they are asking us to simplify. They said we should simplify 4i to power 7 plus 8i to power 9 plus 2i to power 10 minus 4. Wow. So how can we simplify this? Don't forget, we have to break everything down to what? To i squared. So how can you break this down to i squared? That means, oh, how many 2 can we have in 4? Sorry, how many 2 can we have in 7? We can have 2 in 3 places. This will give us 6 and then we have it outside. This will give us what? 8 into what? Into i squared raised to power 4. This will give us 8. That means we need to sum it up to i. And this will give us what? 2 into what? Into i squared raised to power 5 minus 4. And we have said it. What is the basis? The basis is this. Your i squared is what? Is minus 1. Minus 1 cube is minus 1. Minus 1 times 4 will give us minus 4i. Minus 1 squared, sorry, minus 1 in power of 4 is 1. 1 times this and this will give us 8i. Are we getting that? And this will give us minus 1. Minus 1 in power of 5 is minus 1 times this will give us minus 2 minus 4. And if we sum it up, what do we have? We have it as 4i minus 6. And that's simple. And that is all about that. Now, to take it a little bit step higher, we need to understand what we term as the modulus of a complex number or what we term as the magnitude of a complex number. And when we are talking of modulus or magnitude, what is the meaning? Don't forget that the standard form of a complex number is what is A plus BI. And when we are talking of the modulus, it is being denoted as R. And when we are talking of R, we are having it as the square root of what A squared plus B squared. And that is the formula for what? For magnitude, the square root of a squared plus b squared. For instance, let's look at this. They say we should find the magnitude of 2 plus 5i. What is the magnitude of 2 plus 5i? That will give us how is it equal to the square root of their squares. So what is 2 squared plus 5 squared? Don't forget that will give us the square root of 4 plus 25. And that will give us the square root of 29. So it's simple. I don't see any big deal under a complex number. Since you can know all this vega. And also, let's look at it. They said we should find the magnitude of 2 over 1 minus 5i. Wow. So that means how can we find the magnitude of this? We have to simplify this first. After simplifying, then we now have to find the magnitude. Though your calculator can solve this, but time will not permit us to be looking at the calculator aspect. Yours is just to simplify, you rationalize, that will give us 1 plus 5i, 1 plus 5i, and then you expand. This time this will give us 2 plus 10i over 1 times 1 will give us 1. This time this will give us 1 minus 25i squared. And don't forget the basis that what is your i squared? Your i squared will give us minus 1. Minus 1 times this will give us plus 25 plus 1. And that will give us 2 plus 10i over what? Over 26. Wow! So how can we break this down to the real part and imaginary part? That will give us 2 over 26 plus 10i over 26. And this will give us 1 over 13 plus 1. Wow. We can divide it. 2 can divide. That will give us 5i over 13. And since we are having this, that means we need to take it down to what? To the magnitude. And what is the magnitude of this? We have the formula as the square root of a squared plus b squared. And what, how can we solve? Your a is what? Is 1 over 13 all squared. Plus what is your b? We have it as what? 5 over 13 all squared. And we are all mathematicians. You know, 13 squared will give us 169. This will give us the square root of 1 over 169 plus 25 over 169. And you know, 169 is common. 
that will give us the square root of 1 over 169 into 1 plus 25. So what is the square root of 1 over 169? That will give us 1 over 13, the square root of 26. So it's simple. And don't forget you can convert this down to what? Down to indices. Oh, sorry, down to decimal. And that is simple. We have talked about addition, subtraction. We have talked about the multiplication. We have talked about the magnitude or the modulus. And we have talked about the simplification. So there is nothing so up under the complex number. And the last part of complex number we are looking at is how to change a standard form to what we term as a polar form. And this aspect is simple, but it's just somehow complicated. Now, for a standard form of a complex number, what is the standard form of a complex number? A plus bi. Now, from A plus bi, how can we get our magnitude? We have looked at that, that your magnitude is the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now, they can also ask you to find your direction. The direction of this complex number will be asking us to get the value of theta. And you need to know that when we are talking of direction, your direction is tan theta. And your tan theta is having a formula which is what? Which is B over A. So before we now move on to polar form, let's solve a few questions on magnitude, mixing it together with a direction. Now let's assume we have 2 plus 4i. Or let's say 2 plus 5i. They said we should find the magnitude and the direction. Now, what is your magnitude? Your magnitude is out, and that will give us the square root of what? 2 squared, 4, plus 5 squared, 25. And that means your magnitude will give us the square root of 29. That's all. It's simple. And if we want to look for the direction, don't forget, we have said it. What is your direction? Your direction is tan theta. And what is tan theta? B over E. And that will give us what? Tan theta is equal to what is your B? 5 divided by 2. And then you use your calculator and then you find the value of theta. So that will give us the tan inverse of 5 over 2. And what is the tan inverse of 5 over 2? That will give us 68.2 theta. So you can see that it's simple. So under this also, they can ask us to find the direction. Your direction is in terms of what? Of theta. And now, missing it to with a polar form. What is the meaning of a polar form? There is a way you can change your standard form to a polar form. And how can you change your standard form to a polar form? You just need to know this simple formula that your polar form is being denoted with the symbol of Z and your polar form is having a formula which is R cos theta plus I sin theta. So that is how you change a standard form to a polar form. You use this formula. Don't forget we know our R as our magnitude, we know our theta as what? As the direction. And this also is still the same thing as Z is equal to R six theta. Wow, we are bringing six in. What is the meaning of six theta? Six theta is still the same thing as tan, sorry, cos theta plus I sine theta. So if you don't want to write it this way, you can write it this way. Now, back to this question, you know, we have looked for the magnitude and the direction. How can we now change this question to a standard form? It's simple. Since we have looked for the magnitude and the direction, then what is the polar form? Sorry, what is the polar form? That will give us z is equal to r. What is our r? The square root of 29. And then what do we have? Cos theta. What is your theta? 68.2 plus i sine what? 68.2. So if your answer is not like this in the option, then you will see something like this. The square root of 29, how can you mix all these together? That will give us what? Say it's what? 28.2. And that is all. Now let's solve a question, and that will be the last question for this video. And that is uh, how to change from a polar form to a standard form. Let's assume we have Z to be cos 120 plus I sine 120. Well, we are having this and they said we should change it to a standard form. You know, they are giving us a polar form, they are asking us to change it to a standard form. To solve this, it is long, like very, very long, but we can use a shortcut. And what is the shortcut? We will just say that it is Z into 2 into, use your calculator. What is the value of cos 120? Cos 120 will give us minus 1 over 2 plus I. 
What is the value of sine 120? I guess sine 120 should give us root 3 over 2. But well, let's check that. Wow. So that will give us root 3 over 2. So since you are having this, then what is the standard form? That means you multiply 2 by 2. 2 times this will give us minus 1. 2 times this will give us what? The square root of 3. And that is all about a complex number. So just to recap everything, what do we look at under complex number? We said the base of complex number is what? Is the square root of minus 1 is equal to what? I. Or what? Your I squared is equal to minus 1. We look at the addition, we look at the subtraction, we look at the multiplication when you are multiplying two complex numbers together. We look at the simplification, we look at the rationalization, and then we look at the magnitude, we look at what at when they are asking us to find the direction, and after that, we are trying to mix it with what? With the polar form. And that is the summary of complex number. I give me my humble self, Salam Titilokwe Adeni the CEO of Impact Simplify. I love you. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to comment. Thank you very much.